Let me ask you about, about draft night, because draft night 2018 is very different than it was just a few years ago, thanks to Twitter, thanks to uh, social media. We know now that uh, it's very likely that even before the call comes, um, you're well aware of, of what's happening. And so I'm curious, as the draft is unfolding, and you become the first senior off the board at number 21, are there nerves even though the passes are being telegraphed ahead of time? Did you know Utah was one of the hottest, or was there disappointment? How, what was that entire day like? Um, so I went, I went into the draft and there were like four or five teams I was hopeful for, and, uh, but I didn't want to know any information during the draft. I told my agent I didn't want to know anything, so I'm pretty sure he knew a, one, at least one pick ahead. Um, and I wasn't checking Twitter or anything like that to see. So really the only time I knew was, you know, when you're at the draft, they have camera crews there. And so they have a camera crew come up on me like a minute and a half before I get picked. And then I'm sitting there for a minute and a half hoping it's not a decoy, that it's actually me <laughs> going to get picked. Um, but I, I, had a, I had a great workout in Utah. So I was, I was hopeful that they were, uh, that that was a good possibility because I knew it would be a good fit if I went there. And I think it is. I mean, from a basketball perspective, I think about, you know, that backcourt now. Um, and I think it showed a little bit. Let's talk a little summer league because your summer league, it was, you know, two games long, but you showed really, really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about the way that the basketball starts to, I mean, the hoop never changes height. The court's the same. And yet it feels different now that it's a career. What was it like your first time throwing on the jazz uniform and, and then the first time you're d someone up? Yeah, it was, uh, it was very surreal um, just because, well, I've worn that Duke uniform for, it feels like forever. Yeah, and, for us too. <laughs> <laughs> and here, even hearing you introduce me, like Utah Jazz shooting guard, like that sounds weird to me just because I've been yeah. a Duke shooting guard for so long. And uh, so from that part, it was different, but it was also, you know, I've been watching NBA basketball since I was a kid, you know, playing 2K, like video games. Yeah. And, creating myself and putting myself on teams. So to actually make it real and put on the jersey was, uh, it's, it's very surreal. It's still, I don't think it's hit me yet. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's kind of slowly hitting me that I'm a professional now, but um, it's not there yet. Grayson, have you thought about the first time you get an actual character on 2K? <laughs> I have because uh, I was just in Vegas for the summer league. They do the, the face scan and they yeah. have you make a bunch of weird facial expressions so they can... Uh, <laughs> They can get your, your proper reactions in the game. So, uh, do they really? To that. Yeah. <laughs> of course they do. Why wouldn't they, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, it's funny. We had uh, one of your old teammates, Jason Tatum, uh, sitting in that seat last year. And Jason was, he, you know, was actually loved to talk about what he thought his, his rating would be, uh, you know, as soon as it came <laughs> out. And I thought that was a, a really neat way to go about, like, getting ready for your first professional year, right? Yeah. Um, so, let's talk a little bit um, about Duke, the place where you, you know, made yourself a household name. And I want to talk about your four years there, specifically the four years um, as four years. Um, prospects, your, your you know, five stars don't stay for four years anymore. You got to see a number of your teammates, uh, Jaleel and Jason and Justice and so Luke. I mean, all one year after another, leaving and getting drafted very high. What was the decision process like for you each and every year as you sort of renewed your, um, your commitment to Coach K and the Cameron Crazies every single year? Yeah, it wasn't as, it wasn't as tough for me as it might have seemed um, after my freshman year. I didn't play much during my freshman year and then ended it very well with a national championship and a good game that game. But So I never, people had talked about the possibility of me coming out and being a first rounder, but I never seriously considered it after my freshman year. Um, after having a great sophomore year, I considered it a little bit, but I still was never really serious about it. Uh, I think the, the time I considered it most was after my junior year. Mm -hmm. uh, I had worked real hard in the classroom, so I was one class away from graduating oh, really? after my junior year. Um, and so I could have left then, you know, taken a class in the summer, been done with my degree, uh -huh. and got on with it. But I wanted to come back for my senior year you know, be a senior captain under Coach K, something that only a few guys get to do. Yeah. Um, have the senior night, senior banquet. You go through a whole senior season being that senior leader and being the only senior on the team, too. And so I felt like things had kind of come full circle for me, going from freshman not playing very much to 
the lone senior leader of the team, and I didn't want to pass up that opportunity for another year with Coach. Grayson, that senior leadership piece has to be so important because the freshmen that you're playing with every year, your sophomore year, your junior year, and then your senior year, are all five-star dudes. Yeah. Um, I think you, you, the number that you said a little while ago was 33. You had 33 different teammates or yeah, so at Duke. somewhere around there, yeah. What was the one thing that senior Grayson would have told freshman Grayson if you could have? If freshman Grayson was, was a senior on, or was a freshman on your team senior year? Yeah, I'd say slow down and listen. My, I think a lot of guys, they come in with great intentions their freshman year, and this was me. I came in, I wanted to play hard. I was going 100 miles an hour, practice, games, like all the time, just 100 miles an hour. And just, you know, slow down a little bit. One, it helps you appreciate things more. But two, it helps with the game. Like, don't, when you're on the court, you don't need to go 100 miles an hour every time. You slow down. Listen, at the time, Quinn Cook was the senior captain. So listen to the captain. Follow their lead. Uh, and just look up. Look up to the guys that know what they're doing because you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, as a freshman, you have no idea what you're doing. So watch. Watch the older guys and and get the and figure that out. And I did. It took me a little while. I was about midway through conference already once I figured that out. But once I did, it helped me out. Does it feel a little the same? Uh, well, I mean, you haven't really settled in yet in Salt Lake. But are you approaching rookie year the same way you would have approached freshman year? Yeah. Well, now it's it's kind of funny because I went from the oldest guy on the team and now I'm the the young rook coming in. And so I have a great example in front of me of Donovan who. Uh, he had his, his, his rookie year figured out. Like he, he must have been doing something right because he had an yeah. incredible year. Uh, so I can get a lot of advice from him on what he did, what worked, uh, his mindset, things he did on and off the court that kind of helped him get through the year. Because the rookie wall is a real thing. Yeah. And you think, for me, I've been going since the beginning of my senior season. I haven't had a break to just relax, really. And so once, you know, you get 40 games, 50 games into the season, that wall hits. So it's important to look to him and, and then the older veterans on the team. I'm going into a team that we have, it's a very deep team and a playoff team. So I have a lot of guys that they know how to win, they know how to succeed in the league. And uh, it'd, be, it'd be real dumb for me not to pick their brain and figure out what's right. Is the wall just as much mental as it is physical? I mean, you're in the best physical yeah. shape you've ever been in. The wall, once you get 40 games deep, it's, it's a value, I imagine, as a guy who's five foot six with no shot or handles, <laughs> that, that, that the wall is just as much about valuing the possessions in game 47 as much as you do in games one through 10. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, in college, if you play 40 games, that means you're winning a national championship. Right. You know, in the NBA, you play 40 games, congrats, you've made it halfway yeah. through your season. And if you make it into the playoffs, you might be playing 100 games. So, right. And you're traveling way more. I mean, you're on three, game, three, four, five game road trips, playing back to backs. And there's a part of it that, that's physical, but mental too. Just waking up and doing the same thing every day, waking up, not really knowing what city you're in. Just get up and go to work, you know, play basketball. And so I think there's a little bit of both, and it's important to be refreshed. Let's talk about your recruitment to Duke. Um, because, I mean, look, it obviously. It doesn't take much persuading to get someone to sign up to play with Coach K in Durham, North Carolina. But as we, again, we were talking about this, your, your ascent to stardom really sort of happened throughout high school. Mm -hmm. um, you weren't one of those seventh grade stars uh, that was, you know, people are talking about and, you know, those sites that we all could name ad nauseum, yeah. right? So what was it about which, what Coach K said that differentiated Duke from some of the other schools? Just throwing one out there, like maybe, I don't know, Syracuse or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when I started getting recruited, um, I had three, three offers from schools in Florida. Um, University of North Florida was my first offer. Uh, coach Driscoll there is a great coach. Uh, love him. And so I started to play really well in AAU and in summer ball going into my junior year. And my recruitment skyrocketed from three schools to 40 schools. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, the big schools start coming in, Duke, Kansas, Carolina. Um, and I actually had a meeting with my high school coaches. They're like, where do you want to go? And I was like, my dream school is Duke. It always has been. And so Duke started to recruit me. And I had offers from all these other schools, but I was really focused on getting that Duke offer. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so at the end of my junior year, it was April of my junior year, you know, they had seen me play a couple more times. And Coach K came in on an in-home visit and uh, offered, offered me a scholarship there. And my parents, my parents knew that, you know, if Coach K is coming on a home visit, it probably means there's going to be an offer. So they told me, just wait, don't commit on the spot, just <laughs> give it a little time. And so I listened to them. I waited. I waited about six days and committed. That's that's impressive. Yeah. I thought you were gonna wait till like till you got to the end of the driveway. No. Just wait you a know, minute. I was uh, almost ran after the car. But. Yeah. <laughs> so you get to Duke, and uh, the thing about playing for Duke, as you know, um, is that as hard as and this is I guess sort of the beauty of playing for Duke, as hard as Duke fans root for you, every other team wants you to fail miserably. Yeah. Was that part of the, I mean, you are a fiery dude. Was that part of the charm of going to play there? Was that not only was the support going to be there on campus, but also you are, it's, it's, it's the 15 of you, including, you know, and then with some coaches, against the world. Mm -hmm. I didn't think about that, and I probably should have a little bit more <laughs> before I went. Um, <laughs> I didn't, uh, I had no idea the, I, I knew Duke fans were very passionate because you see the Cameron crazies, you see uh -huh. everything that comes with that, but I had no idea that there was this love or hate thing about Duke. Yeah. Um, I did to an extent because when I started to watch more basketball, J.J. Redick was kind of the face of college basketball at the time, and I had a kind of an idea, but I, I don't think I fully recognized yeah. the the full love and hate like you got half the country really loves you and the other half is like who can't stand you and uh so i didn't really experience that till i got there and then uh -huh. it hits you and you're like oh, okay this is how it's gonna be That's i guess nice. this is what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> this is what i signed up for <laughs> four times yeah but you know that's and if, and if we can i mean let's push that down the court a little bit not only is Duke the place, but I mean, I'm not the first one to tell you. You know you were also the one that got so much of that. I mean, as sure. much love as Duke fans gave you. Good. I, there was a, a stretch of probably six weeks where I couldn't turn on my TV or my radio and hear your name. I felt like you were in my family. <laughs> and I heard more about you than I did my folks. Um, was there a moment when you realized that uh, Grayson Allen's name was more, you were maybe more than just a dude who played basketball at a level that only few can dream, you were sort of a cultural flashpoint. Was there a moment when you realized that? I don't think so. I think I'm still kind of realizing it as I yeah. look back and, because like when you're fully in it, I try not to even like pay attention to cool. the media that much anyway. And so I kind of, you try not to block that out as much as you can because yeah. you don't want to get too much praise and in, in my, case too much criticism right, right. <laughs> but you don't want to get too high or too low on either one and so I really tried to stay even and not pay attention to a lot of it but you know kind of kind of looking back and realizing you know through the draft and just how big my name was it was actually incredible and I think a lot of it was because it's so contrasting that it's like it's, it's not something I put to rest like if right. there's something negative about my name then you got 50% of America and Duke fans That's true. trying to bring it up and then there's the other 50% trying to bring it down so it just keeps it keeps going and keeps getting talked about more and more yeah, just yeah, because yeah. of that because of that really uh, <laughs> the dynamic there it's really fascinating yeah. it is so here's here's the part that I'm excited about because now as I promised I only have three more questions left for Grace and Allen and after I'm done, a handful of you will get the opportunity. So after this question, I'm going to ask for volunteers. At that point, you may put your hands in the air uh, and uh, wave them around like you just don't care. And uh, <laughs> one of you, I, you have to say that, right? And one of the great Hoopal staffers will come by and recognize uh, a, a number of you. So let's talk about high school, um, specifically your senior year when you went from like you had mentioned, a dude with some, a guy with some offers to having the world really to choose from. Um, your McDonald's All-American class was, I mean, J Carl Anthony Towns, Jalil Okafor, and we could go on and on and on about those guys. And only a few of them stayed for four years. Right. Um, can you talk about that experience as, as that might have been the moment where you realized that basketball for Grayson Allen was really different than it was for most of your friends that you grew up with? Um, 
that was kind of it. You know, I uh, I had always dreamed that that was part of like the dream was being a McDonald's All American because yeah. um, I mean, when you're watching TV, you see like LeBron. It's like, oh, here's highlights from LeBron's dunk contest when he was a McDonald's All American. It's like, uh -huh. okay, this is kind of the path that these stars take, and so you want to be on that same path and. Um, I kind of snuck in there at the end a Did little you? bit. You know, I I was uh, my like rise in the the rankings that call you a five or a four star. Uh, I kind of got into like the top thirty there towards the end, and so I didn't know that if I was going to be McDonald's All American or not. I wasn't like Jalil, who was you know number one recruit throughout high school. It was I wasn't sure, and I actually found out by watching TV by watching TV and. Uh, they announced the East roster first, and um, I grew up in Florida, so it's, I see the East roster, and I'm like, okay, well, I didn't make it. You know, that's okay. I didn't have great expectations. And they show the West roster. My name's on there, <laughs> and I was completely surprised. I had no idea. I had yeah. no knowledge beforehand. I think most of the guys know from their college coaches, but I hadn't checked my phone until I saw that. Um, so I was extremely surprised, and, you know, once I see myself on that list with these other guys who – you know, it's okay, Jalil, he's gonna be one and done because he's that great. And I'm on a list with them. It's okay, you know, this playing professional can be kind of real now. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, if you have a question for Grace and Alan, raise your hand right now. One of the great Hoopal staffers will come around and recognize a handful of you. You mentioned Jalil, you mentioned so many of the guys who you played with. Um, and because so many of them um, were one and done or two and done, and because you decided to stay for four years and it clearly worked, you have your, you know, your psych degree and, and your, your number 21 overall draft pick by the Utah Jazz, this, you might have already said the name. It might have been Quinn. Was there one older guy who, one older teammate who really sort of helped shape your game at the collegiate level? I think... Um... And there's a lot, I took a lot of different things from different guys. Um, I think Quinn helped me at the beginning. Uh, I got to play with Emil Jefferson for three years, uh -huh. which, um, th which, you know, it was horrible that he got hurt, but I was thankful because I got another year with him. And uh, he's probably the smartest basketball player I've played with. Mm -hmm. Um, just because, I mean, he, he knows how to rebound. It's like he can just read the ball where it's going to be. Uh, on offense, he's incredibly smart. He thinks through the game. He knows, you know, when we need this, when we need that, you know, when it's time to slow down. And he does so many different things, like handling the ball and passing, that I kind of learned a lot of things on offense through him that, you know, we're, we're different positions, so I'm, he's not teaching me how to do these incredible skill moves, but it's more like just thinking through the game, you know, finding easy ways to score, uh, you know, finding different cuts, different screens, you know, the right passes to make. And, and just leadership out there. And I think spending three years with him really helped my game and helped me step, in, step out of my show. He's a yeah. very vocal guy, and I wasn't vocal when I first came in, and so he helped me become that. Um, I think about one skill that, going back to your All-American, your McDonald's All-American showing, that we haven't really seen much in the last five years. You won the McDonald's All-American dunk contest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there's a chance that you might consider entering it at the NBA level. <laughs> oh, I definitely would. Yeah. Would you really? I definitely would, yeah. All right. I hope I, uh, I would love to get an invite. I definitely would, though. That would be sick. Yeah. That would be absolutely sick. All right. My last question is this. It's your first time here in Springfield. It's your first time at the Hall of Fame. We are sitting underneath all of those who came before, contributed, gave us the game uh, that you now call a career, and will have, hopefully, the game's better when Grayson Allen is in it, so hopefully we're looking at a 25-year <laughs> NBA career here. What is this moment like for you amongst all of the honors and, and places you've been sitting beneath this dome with Michael and Larry and, and Magic and mm -hmm. all of these behind us? Can you put this into words? Um, you can't really. Uh, I mean, just looking at all these pictures, I mean, this is the game that I've, that I love and have dedicated really my whole young life to so far. And... Um, it's amazing to be here. It's amazing. All these, everyone here, like, influenced the game in some way. Like, the game was different before they came in, and it was different after. And uh, I think that's incredible, you know, people that just leave a mark on the game. And, and ultimately, they leave a mark on the people who end up playing the game, like me and, like, all the kids who are playing nowadays. And, you know, like, 
people in the NBA like LeBron and Steph now, the game is different because they came through. And that's leaving a mark on the kids that play the game too. And so I think that's incredible. And I have, uh, there's a certain level of gratefulness for all of them and what they did for the game and the influence that they had not only on that, but on me and, you know, me finding my love for the game and how it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Grayson Allen. Now I told you you were gonna have some fastballs. Here they come. All right, for anyone who's about to ask a question, I only have two rules for you. One, you let me hold the microphone, and two, you introduce yourself to Grayson before you ask the question. Here we go. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Matt. And who was the hardest guy you had to guard? That's tough. Um, let me give two answers. Uh, I would say Dennis Smith, my junior year, was probably the hardest guy to guard uh, in college. He didn't have the jump shot yet, but he was hitting his jump shot against us, and that made it tough, especially to stay in front. The hardest guy I went up against uh, consistently was Malcolm Brogdon, just because on offense and defense, he's just tough. He's, his face is never going to change. He's just going to give you kind of that stone cold killer look and on defense beat you up, and on offense just slowly, slowly get by you and uh, beat you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, I like the Duke gear. Hey, <laughs> something tells me this shirt is on purpose today. <laughs> um, I'm Lauren, and um, I'm, I'm wondering who you've bonded closest to over like your whole college um, basketball. Um, great question. Uh, I would have to say Matt Jones, Emil Jefferson, and Marshall Plumley. They were my roommates my sophomore year, and then Matt and Emil were again my junior year, and. Uh, I had a lot of good times with those guys on and off the court and joking around and, um, you know, it's tougher in college when I have teammates for one year, but those guys I was with for a couple of years and it was, uh, I had great times with all of them. One national championship together, so that means a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank Excellent you. question. How are you, sir? Hi, Grayson Hans Nielsen from Layton, Utah. We're excited to have you come to the Jazz. So this is a treat for us to be here today. What holes are you going to fill for the Jazz that they missed out on last year in the playoffs that you can take over and fill up? Uh, is there something I can add to my diet to get a beard like that? I think James Harden's is a little better fine too. So um, you'll be going up against a few beards this uh, season coming up. Uh, well, when I, see the, when I see the Jazz, I see a team that they already made it to the playoffs, made it to the second round. They had a great playoff run, and they did that with injuries. And we have the same core of guys coming back. Um, and so I think as a rookie coming into a team like that, I have to add depth to the team. And by adding depth, I need to be someone that they can rely on no matter what that is. It kind of goes back to my freshman year. Where I didn't know if I was going to get in the game or not, or I could play half the game. You know, I, I need to be ready for either one. And, um, and they have a great system, a great chemistry going, and uh, come in and not mess that up. Yeah. Add to it and make it even better. And uh, I love that I'm coming into a winning team, and I wish I could be more specific to your answer and tell you I could come in and do this, this, and this, but uh, I think there's going to be a little bit of everything, and especially with Coach Snyder being a great coach, he'll find ways to – to fit me and I'll find ways to adjust my game and fit with the team. Awesome, welcome to Utah. Thank you. Thank you. The official Utah welcome crew came. Hey, bro, how's it going? How are you doing? Uh, my name is Javon Brewster and my question is, um, what's it called? What um, advice do you have for upcoming freshmen that may be trying to play high school basketball? I would say um, the first, what I did when I was in middle school, I had the role models I had were, I obviously watched NBA, but the guys who were on the varsity team that I was trying to join, I would, you know, hang out and watch them practice afterwards, or I would, they had a lot of camps where they were the counselors. I would try to ask them questions on what they did, you know, in the gym, not necessarily what you see during games, but what they do to prepare to do that. And so I think the most important thing that you can keep in your mind is preparation. Uh, you know, the games are fun, and, but to get there, you need a lot of preparation. And uh, so figure out what the guys are doing that works for them, whether it's you need to make 200 to 300 shots a day, whether it's 
with your weak hand, you get a certain amount of dribbles in and finishes in. Whatever, whatever the guys are doing that are on the varsity team that you're trying to join, try to pick their brain and, and figure out what they're doing that works and, and, and use it. All right. Thank you. Yep. Hey, good luck. Good afternoon. My name is Olivia Clough. I'm from Westminster, Vermont. Um, what, what NBA player inspired you the most to play? Um, I would have to say Dwayne Wade. Um, I grew up, and growing up in Florida, uh, they won a championship 2006, Miami did. Um, I believe it was 2006, and I was a Dwayne Wade fan. He's part of the reason why I wanted to wear number three. Um, I loved his game. You know, I would, I had a hoop outside my house, and I would lower it down to seven and a half or eight feet, and uh, use a basketball that was a little bit smaller than a normal basketball and I would just watch whatever moves he did and go out there and and do the exact same thing or at least that's what it looked like in my head. Um, <laughs> just practice whatever dunks, Euro steps, finishes, jump shots, you know, all that kind of stuff and so I have, uh, he definitely had a big impact on me and especially when I was coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. Hey bud, how's it going? Uh, hi, I'm Garrett. I'm from Pittsburgh. And uh, would you be willing to play a quick one-on-one -on -one game on the Peach Basket? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I, I, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you know, do, would you spot me some points? Because I'm in Vans. <laughs> 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 this guy dropped to 20 overall. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. You're a juggler, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So you might be juggling your way to the Peach Basket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Hi, my name is Noah. My question is, out of all the teams you played against, what was your favorite one um, um, to play against? To play against? Uh, great question, Noah. My favorite team to play against was the North Carolina Tar Heels. And um, I say that confidently because I leave, I leave college with a winning record against them. Yes. <laughs> Thank That's you. All we needed. Noah's out. <laughs> you ran out. <laughs> and here's the closer. <laughs> Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I want to know um, how old were you when you start when you want when you when you um, want to play basketball? And, um, and who was your favorite team? Um, so I started playing basketball real young. I also played soccer a lot when I was younger. I played a lot of sports. I played soccer, threw the baseball around, some football, basketball. Um, I really started to love and play basketball a lot in probably around fifth grade, middle school. Um, I still played soccer and everything like that. And then in eighth grade and high school, I went full basketball and fully dedicated myself to that. And favorite team, favorite team. Um, I actually grew up in, uh, I grew up, my dad was a Georgia Bulldog fan, mom was a Florida Gator fan. So I, I don't know if you guys know that rivalry is intense and especially in Jacksonville where the game is played. Uh, and so my dad convinced me to grow up a Georgia Bulldog fan. Once I got into basketball, <laughs> there we go, go dogs. Uh, once I got into basketball, I started to, I fell in love with Duke and then in the NBA, Miami Heat. And now Utah Jazz. Thank you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, one final round of applause for Mr. Grayson Allen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now, Grayson is going to head on over to the autograph table. And so I, I want to let you know ahead of time, the Hoop Hall staff will put you in line behind.